Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to Camp Colors Workshop. If you uh, watched my previous video, part one, on uh, making a prosthetic replacement prosthetic uh, leg suspension part, you'll know that uh, I did some 3D printing to uh, replace some parts um, in a rotational and uh, vertical suspension unit. Uh, today, I'm going to use one of the parts I 3D printed for that unit in a different unit to see how what I'm doing affects the suspension. So if you're uh, if you watch part one, you'll be used to looking at things uh, through my um, lighted magnifying glass. So here we have the uh, the suspension unit that I'm going to replace. Um, you'll see that uh, there's quite a crack in there. Uh, so what's what's happened is obviously over time uh, the rubber has worn. We'll do a close up of that. You can see there's quite a big crack in there. Uh, not too much other damage. There's a bit of damage here and there, just uh, surface damage though. Um, so what we're going to do is use my new lathe that I've purchased uh, and I did a quick review video on. Uh, we're going to cut a new one of these rubber inserts out of some thick uh, rubber that I've got off Amazon. Uh, this is the first prototype which I'm just going to do some experiments with. I'm going to show you how I cut uh, that from, from um, out of the block. We'll just go over to my drill and do that. Okay so the idea is to replace this and do a few experiments. What I'm basically going to do is core drill the middle uh, of one of these replacement rubber units here and put in my suspension unit that I uh, made in the last video using my 3D printer that's got uh, plastic on the outside, flexible plastic Ninja Flex and this particular one's got uh, silicon uh, inside as a damper unit but I've actually decided to use caravan glue uh, as a damper unit um, on the previous video you'll see that uh, so that's the plan, is to put the core drill through the middle of this. I think I'll go straight through, so I get a full full use of the suspension, um, plastic suspension unit inside. And then I'm going to just uh, seal that in, probably with some more caravan glue, and try it out. So first of all, I've got to obviously cut out another one of these, as I said. I'll do that on the drill now. I'll probably do two or three, actually, since I'm there. Um, I'm going to wear... A face mask for all of this because these uh, the dust uh, on these uh, this rubber apparently is not very good it could be quite harmful I think prolonged exposure so and I will be creating some dust both on the lathe and on the drill uh, so I will be wearing my mask and a good one okay so those of you that uh, saw my watch my lathe video um, you'll you'll remember that uh, I found there was a for the chuck guard there was a, a peg that came out and uh, I was going to remove that but I've actually found a use for it. I'll just show you. <clears throat> so this is now my little lathe table that I've got on top of the lathe for for YouTube, so I don't have to mess about and go elsewhere. Nice little table here. Uh, I can just do my shots on. So I'll just show you what I had to do if anybody's interested to <clears throat> get this suspension unit out of the uh, prosthetic foot that I'm working on. Uh, I had to make up a special tool. Uh, this is basically a all off eBay. Everything's off eBay. Um, this is a spring compressor which luckily fitted into this top unit here which I onto the foot and I welded on a, a shaped washer here and a bar which fits on the other part of the shoe and I'm sorry foot and I can just basically wind wind in uh, and get the compression that's required of a special from a special tool which of course I don't have I can't get for any price so I've had to make my own up anyway that's how I got that suspension unit out okay so what we'll do next is we'll go to the drill and start core drilling some more of these 
practice units and final units out. As you can hear, I've got my mask on. Uh, I've just uh, started cutting a new uh, billet out of this uh, block, rubber block I got from eBay, so we'll just carry on with that. I'm doing it nice and slowly so the rubber doesn't burn or distort. Just very slowly, waiting for it to hit the bottom. Okay, that's it, we've hit bottom. A little bit of smoke is going out of the door. Okay, we'll come back up and switch off. Okay, so obviously the billet is now, because I've got a clean uh, separation, it's gone up into the uh, hole. Uh, I've just chamfered some of this off. I'm just going to chamfer a bit more off on the bench grinder because that's the easiest way for me to do this. So I've got a nice chamfer there now, uh, which matches the original more or less. Doesn't have to be totally accurate for this case. As long as I've got some shampoo, that'll be okay. Okay, so now we're going to go back to the lathe and machine this. We're now uh, back at the lathe, having cut uh, this billet out, uh, chamfered it on the angle grinder, um, and I'm going to try out. Uh, one of this uh, ubiquitous sets of Chinese um, cutting tools here. Uh, so the main cutting bit is on the end here. Um, I've been using the uh, replaceable uh, cutting tips previously and I found that uh, now I've put this one in, um, I'll just give you the numbers there, that's what it says, this was from Amazon as well. Um, so basically uh, I've had to go up now, re-shim, uh, I had to cut some new shims, so I'm now, as opposed to, I think I was just under, under a millimetre, 0.8 with the previous replaceable tipped uh, tools, I'm now had to go up to 1.25 of a shim to put these tools in. So uh, if you've got the standard tool post, you'll need to be looking roughly to shim around that distance to uh, to get your tool on point uh, and uh, at the right height so that looks pretty spot on to the middle to me uh, I don't think I'm not going to get any closer than that than that so that'll have to do but it's okay it's pretty close if not right on so we'll just take the headstock away and uh, I've worked out that uh, I've got to cut this the diameter of the billet is uh, 33.5 uh, and the diameter of the ins the insert that I want that goes into the suspension unit to hold it in uh, under pressure uh, that is uh, 25 mil so I've got to cut 8.5 mil uh, into this block now I'm not going to do that from just the dials because I've not used these dials before uh, so I don't exactly know how accurate they are. So what I'm going to do is just uh, start off and I'll just measure when I think I'm getting close uh, to that. So as you can see, I'm, I'll just uh, explain what I've done with the tool here. I'm just doing this by, I'm basically uh, eyeballing this because uh, I haven't quite got the... Uh, uh, the cross slide here level and in any case I noticed that uh, I'll just show you here what I did notice I can't is that I think the zero on this base is actually way off off center here so I'm not quite sure what the point of that is if I just get the ruler down there uh, yeah I think you can see it's not really anywhere near the center so that's a complete waste of space that dial there uh, so it's all going to have to be eyeballed unless I work out a different way to do this. This side's fairly 
flat here. Uh, so I'm just going to eyeball this because the tool's not straight because of the, the cross slide's not straight. So anyway, that seems that looks about right to me. Uh, you've probably got a better view than me. I think that's about right. We'll try that anyway, see how that goes. So um, I'll reset this for what it's worth. To zero. So I've got some idea of where I'm going. Okay, so that's that's about right now. I'll just uh, t just check everything's tight. Um, just check that we've got the right yeah right depth there. That is. That is. It's four mil actually, so we'll just check on here. Actually, yeah, that's spot on. Good eyeballing, I think. More or less, but yeah, I would say that's spot on actually. So we'll, we'll, we'll stick at that. I'll just get rid of this tool. Get rid of all unnecessary bits out of the way. Okay, uh, so I'll, we'll see. We'll start to roll and see what happens. Okay, so obviously I've put this in uh, this billet in. Now the problem with the billet is it's quite difficult to uh, to get it in straight. But I think I've done a reasonable job. It doesn't have to be a hundred percent accurate. This. So we'll just go back out a bit and I'll stop it. Just check that that is four mil there. Now I can see it. Uh huh. That's yeah. That's four mil. So we're okay. More or less four mil. Uh, double check it on this as well. Uh huh. I'd say that's more or less spot on. Uh, I could get away with slightly less than slightly more, so um, I might just turn it back a fraction. Okay, we'll go with that. So, I'll just go back out to where we were. So I've gone in one, that's one millimetre I went in, two millimetres. Okay, so we'll go... We'll start at uh, three millimeters. So I'm on my speed is about uh, 450 revs, about 500. So we'll go with that and just gently machine in. You can see I've got the tool at quite a long way. Uh, that's one millimeter uh, because I'm not too concerned about the rubber offering too much resistance to the tool being right out and it's also kept the tool post well away from the chuck as well so I'm not too concerned about that so that's uh, just feeding in fairly slowly here it's another millimeter another millimeter Okay, I'm just going to stop there for a minute and just double check that we've got the the right measurements in. So let's have a quick look here. I think we're way out yet, but I just want to make sure. I think I've gone six mil, but we'll have a look. Uh huh. So what are we at? Thirty. Oh, we've gone. On thirty. Oh, that, right. I think I had the wrong. Let's try and get this. Yep. There we go. Oh, that's better. Okay. Let's try that. 
that didn't seem right. Okay, so we're down to uh, 25, 6, 7, and we want to be at 25. So basically, we've got another 2 mil to go. Uh, so that's on zero. Uh, I'll start up again at uh, so I'm around 500. I'm not burning the rubber. So we'll go one more millimetre. See what that comes out at. On the uh, gauge. So hopefully, if this dial is anywhere accurate, this should be about this should be 26 mil. Uh huh. Oh, 25. Okay. Right, we'll stop there. Okay, well that, that looks about right. It doesn't have to be exactly right, but that's good enough, I think. Um, by the time I've got rid of this rough, I might get rid of some of this rough, just gently file it down. Um, and then, yeah, I think it'll be 25 easily. What, what I'm going to attempt to do now, having changed the tool, is to recreate this shape here that's the front again uh, so I I need to create something similar to this shape uh, this concave shape because what happens is the foot pivots on this so I think the idea is there's a give on each side to allow the foot to pivot from side to side so hence why there's that uh, concave shape cut in so I've, I've basically I'm just going to cut forwards a concave shape as close to the chuck as I can get which is that close and then I'm going to undo the piece turn it turn it away and do most of the other shaping from the other side where I can get a bit more grip so very carefully I'll start off going back up to uh, around 500 revs, just gently start the uh, concave shape in there. I don't really know, I'm just going to go in by eye. Most of this is done by eye, as you can see. So that looks to be a good start. I think I will stop there now. Uh, just come as far over as I dare. That's it. That's as far over as I dare because you could hear the, the uh, chuck there. So that's fine. We'll leave that there. We'll, we'll come out and switch off. Now, by the way, yes, I noticed that also happens um, when I switch off from high speed sometimes. It, it, the, the, the motor keeps going anyway. It's gone back to zero. And obviously, good practice would demand that you switch off the lathe every time you go near it, certainly when you put the chuck key in, um, which I must admit I don't do all the time, but I have this time because it did that overrun business. So... Uh, anyway, we'll just, uh, I'm just get clearing off some tools here because I left them in the way. Okay, so we're just going to now, because I'm putting the chuck key in, I have actually switched the machine off. I'm just going to turn the work over, see what kind of grasp of it I can get in, these, in the chuck. Uh, of course I don't want to over tighten this and, and crush the rubber but I don't want to under tighten it either um, and have the thing come out so I can't be bothered measuring so I'm just going to do it by eye which is very difficult actually because I've got that chamfer on it as well so it's going to I'll have to switch it off again because I've just said about putting 
switching it off when the chuck key's in. Okay, that's the first thing I was taught on my engineering course 40 odd years ago. That might be better, but I'm, I'm just going to be careful. I, yeah, I could be. Uh, that's not going to quite make it. So I'd rather do all this in one. I'm just going to have to bring out the piece a bit further. Try and get it into this chuck. This is not going to be easy, but then again, this is rubber. And one of the reasons I'm doing rubber to start off with is just to get back into the swing of using a lathe. Because as I said in my review video, I think it's probably close to 20 years I haven't used a lathe. So it's uh, quite a long time. So I'm just re-familiarising myself with the... Uh, with the procedures there we go well I don't know we'll have to have a look at that um, and I'm just going to go over because I see on the original kind of it is even there's a bit of extra meat on there which hopefully will more or less how this will end up so I'm just going to go in a bit more because I just want to see how this works out once I start cutting it, so yeah, we're okay. Uh, we're okay for the chuck. So it's going to go back up to 500 again, and very slowly start cutting in here. To uh, roughly the same depth as is on the other side, which I shall eyeball. Okay, yeah, that's about right. More. And we're there. Okay. Well, I'll maybe move this over a little bit. But I'm not going to get down there, so I'm going to have to change this bit. Okay. Shut that off. Yeah, it's done it again, you see. It's got this overrun if I suddenly shut the lathe off. So I've got to remember to do that quite slowly. So I think we're going to come out here. Let's see what kind of... It's still reasonably... <laughs> Accurate actually considering so anyway what I shall do now is just uh, Get the tool off into a different direction, so I'm hoping that I can now just get in there finish off that chamfer Cut I should say Okay, so we're kind of we're okay. We're very close to that uh, chuck, but I'm just going to give myself some safety room and hopefully get this little lip out. So I'll start off again. Just double check. Oh, ha 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 ha. Got to two up the tool post. Thought so. Anyway, just as well I check that. Okay, so off we go again. Very carefully. Up to 500. Very carefully cut into there. I'm just going to turn the tool post very slightly. I think I didn't quite get quite a good enough edge there, so I'm just going to come back, check the chuck is clear. Try that again. Nearly there. Chuck is okay. I'm just going to go right up close. Chuck is still okay. Start on low revs just to make sure there isn't any chuck. Engagement there. 
with the uh, tool. I'm just going to finish this off. There we go. That's it. You see that's uh, just going slightly more, I think. Okay, that'll do. Well, I'm just going to come back slightly. To that previous chamfer, okay, that'll do. Okay, so yeah, so we've got a nice little cut into there, which is roughly the same as that one. That's good enough for me, may not be good enough for you, but it's good enough for me. Okay, uh, so let's have a look, switch this off. Do the appropriate health and safety this time get this out get the billet out okay so let's see what we've got well a bit rough there at the top but not too bad i think for a first proper effort so you i've got the yep i've got the slope and the chamfer there or the chamfer uh and i've got the more or less the correct convex shape there. I notice it's slightly less, slightly less at the top there um, than there is at the base. So I don't know. Um, I might just actually cut that down a little bit. Okay, I'll just. I think I will cut that down very slightly just so it matches the original, which means I've got to do this again. With it switched off, so I think, yeah, just come out and go back into that shape there. So, I'm cutting off a bit more than is at the bottom. I think I want to be about there. Maybe slightly less of an angle. Maybe that. Okay, yeah, that, I think that'll do it. Just to get that slightly narrower at the top than the bottom, because that's seems to be how we do it um, and I'll just check how far we're gonna have to go in there because I don't want to slice off too much of this lip yeah I'm gonna go in a bit further over actually just tighten the tool put yeah I'm gonna go so I want to replicate that there is a lip there so I think that'll do it okay so we'll just go in Check the tool post and um, check that I'm clear of the chuck, which I am. So I'm just going to go in now and uh, I might use some sideways movement also. So we'll just very carefully cut that. Just going to come out slightly as I go. So just very carefully, just a bit more, and I'll check it, see how we're doing. Okay, we'll have a look at that. Uh, yeah, I think that's definitely shorter now. Sorry, narrower. So then that's definitely narrow at the top than it is at the bottom. Uh, 
and I've still got that concave shape so it doesn't look it because obviously I've got the end of that squeezed in the vise into the chuck sorry so what I'll do now is I think I'll just replicate the um, chamfer at the top there so I'm using the same tool actually I didn't expect to use the same tool for all of this I might go with that one actually uh, yeah I think I will I'll go with that one just to get that chamfer on there so Take this out. Okay, put the new one in, and uh, yeah, I think well, I'm, I'll put it in a bit shorter this time because we're well away from the chuck. So I did measure this other one previously. With my shims so it seems fine might be getting some plastic in that uh, sorry some rubber <laughs> in this cross slide anyway that's fine I don't have to worry about that uh, we'll just tighten that up I've got a fluorescent light going in this workshop which I need to replace that's why there's sometimes some flickering that's definitely on its way out okay so Tighten that up. Just gonna, I'm going to wipe my hands because that A covered in grease and black soot. I shall vacuum up as soon as I finish this. Uh, right. Let's see if we can get a chamfer at the top then. Just a very small one. I don't want to overdo this, but I do want to get it on there. Okay. Just turn that up. I had it a bit low last time. So I'll just turn that up very slightly. Gonna go crossways a little bit. Dig a bit deeper. Let's see how that looks. Okay. Uh-huh, doesn't matter too much about there being a lip here. Um, that's, yeah, I mean, that's okay. That, uh, that would do now. I'm just, but I would, I am going to go in just slightly further. Take a bit more chamfer off, just a little bit more. Okay, I think, yeah, 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 that's about right. It's best I'm going to do. I could put the tool around here and just do a slight amount of further tapering off, but. I um, really don't need to, and I don't want to damage anything, but I will, just because I can. So, we'll just go up to here, just take that corner, that slight edge off there. See how that is? Okay. Yeah, that'll do. That's pretty close, I think. So, nice and smooth. Best I can do uh, for this prototype. So, we'll just get that, switch it off, the lathe off. We'll just get that out. See how it looks. So, okay, well. I think I'll just, if I really wanted to, I would smooth that up, but I'm not going to bother because it has no 
function of smoothing it up. That I might. That needs a, just a little bit of uh, cleaning up. Now we'll test how this uh, rubber reacts. So that's the front. You can see I've got the slope there. So I'm quite happy with that. That's that'll do very much for a a test piece, uh, and we'll see how we go with that. Okay, so that's the end of this section. Okay, so uh, what I've done is uh, I've got a, another prototype piece. This is the one that uh, I'll use to do a straight replacement of this rubber uh, stop here for the suspension system. Uh, what I'm going to do now is just experiment um, and I'm, I'm going to drill a hole through another prototype I've got here, an earlier one, um, and then I'm going to put in as I said at the start of the video, one of the suspension systems through there. Uh, so I've just got to cut that off um, and see how that reacts. I'm interested to see how having that soft, more pliable material in the centre of this will work um, on the foot and whether it will actually be durable. Because of course I'm doing this myself, it doesn't matter if it's not durable. Um, I'll just replace that with that and if that's not durable I'll 3D print another one in plastic. I don't think I'll do it in such flexible plastic as I've used previously. Um, I'll use a, a harder flexible plastic because I think that will be needing quite a hard plastic in there to be remotely durable. Okay so um, I've tightened the chuck up and I've measured it as best I can um, so I'm gonna go back up to uh, 500 revs to see what happens okay well it's fairly good at the moment nothing's moving apart from that initial wobble just trying to go smoothly again See if I can get through the middle. Now this piece was not as accurately cut as the one I've just done so I'm not going to get the perfect hole through here. Oh yeah there we go. Yeah so that came through okay I'm pretty sure. Oh not quite done yet I don't think right I'm gonna have to I think what's happened is the uh, rubber is now yeah no just see what's happened okay uh, I'm just gonna have to carefully do this because the rubber seems to have come through all right I can see the jaws of the cutter now so that's okay Oh, uh aha, -huh, that's fine. Yeah, what we'll do actually is we'll take this off. I'll just switch it off. We'll take that out of there, bring it back, do it this way, get that out. Yeah, that didn't quite work as I'd have hoped because it's actually taken the base out. So I'm going to have to, if I do cut this again. Yeah, I've lost the base now. So, no, that's I'm going to have to cut. If I do this, I'll have to cut without uh, going all the way through. So, all right, at least I've got a, a marker one there. Okay, so we're not going to be using the uh, a hole drill because uh, that was uh, a failure. We're going to try a. Uh, we're going to drill another prototype. I'm keeping the best one. If you remember, I'm keeping that as is. Uh, I've got another prototype here that I'm just going to drill in the traditional way. Um, so I've got my drill truck chuck. Sorry, drill chuck out of my uh, pillar drill, uh, and I've got a oversized bit here, which I'm going to. Uh, drill into the rubber block. Um, now a usual thing with the, 
the block. I haven't, I can't over tighten it. I can't under tighten it either. So hopefully everything's going to be okay. Um, we're going to go in uh, 15 mil, which I've marked out there because I can't really see the scale on this thing. Um, so I'm just going to do it by eye as <laughs> most of the other stuff. Uh, and then we'll put in, we'll just cut this off. I'll just saw this because I, I haven't got time to part this uh, on the lathe. I'll just saw it, I think. Uh, and then insert that into there with some caravan glue and see how that feels. Okay, so, uh, oh, by the way, my bearings were dry. I just heard a, a dry bearing noise. So I've just put some more uh, oil on, into them. I've got some slightly thicker oil. Molybdenum oil, but I'm going to get something really thick to get in there. So if anybody can recommend any oil, I was thinking maybe motorcycle chain oil or something uh, in there because these these bearings just went dry. So I was right in my original uh, lathe review to put in uh, some lubrication in there because clearly there is none, and it was starting to make a dry bearing noise. Okay, so off we go again then. Uh, Let's make sure that's down properly. Okay, that's better. There's a bit of movement in there. So I'll just gently at... Uh, ...500 revs, I think, thereabouts. I'll just gently cut into this. Down to uh, roughly, well... ...fairly accurately, 15 mil. See, I've done a bit of housekeeping and got rid of some of this... Uh, dust and I should do the same again. I don't really want that hanging around the lathe. Okay, so we're up to the mark there. That, that'll do about there, I think. I don't want to go too far and get through the base again. So we'll knock that off. Just bring the tool back. Let's see how that looks. That's quite a good, nice snug fit, eh? Um, we managed to get in. I'll just double check that. So that is, yeah, that is exactly 15 mil in there, which is what I was aiming for. Okay, so what we're going to do then is we'll take this out and I'll just saw this. And the way that the uh, this fits into the prosthetic foot is that that will actually be held in there at the top because uh, the pressure's coming through. Uh, and that's that's just gonna, that, that, that'll just be held in the base because I've kept the rubber intact there. So we'll see what kind of movement I get uh, from from doing it this way. So I'll just take this out and saw it. Um, having just sawn off the uh, plastic insert there that I'm going to use, so I'm just going to put in a bit of the magic ingredient. Uh, which is caravan glue. I'm just going to try and help that bond in. I love caravan glue, so we're going to be taking the opportunity to use this. Um, so hopefully, I did cut this out of chamfer and I'm going to line it up. That's it there, more or less. So we'll squeeze that add in and uh, just give that a quick wipe. <coughs> That's it. Well, I can feel it. There we go. Not too bothered about the caravan glue being over, but I will get that off. Okay, so not quite on the... Sh that's it. That's on the chamfer now. Okay, so we've... Uh, Drilled and filled the uh, suspension unit there. So we left in the end, I think we left about 10 mil or so, uh, just above the, the foot there that I uh, machined out. Um, I've put some caravan glue in because I love caravan glue. It's 
that's great stuff. Uh, I'm not sure what that's going to do exactly. It'll certainly add a buffer down at the bottom where the, there's a bit of a gap from the drill uh, that I should have shaped out actually thinking about it, but I didn't. So I've put a bit of caravan glue down there as a buffer, which may or may not work. It'll certainly stay in. Um, and you can see that's slightly proud, that uh, suspension unit now, but I'm just going to compress this overnight in a vise whilst it dries and just see what happens. So quite messy now, but uh, it's fine. This caravan glue won't make, have any effect on the unit itself. This channel is all about function over form. So there we go. That's us uh, all ready to go. So. Uh, any questions, anything you think I've done wrong, um, I'll just recap that uh, on the cross slide I had a problem with that on the lathe. The cross slide, that indexing um, uh, uh, dial, um, I found actually later on it did actually move, so you can move it, but there's still no markings for the cross slide, so it is almost virtually useless. Uh, what else happened? Oh, I got that overrun. Um, when I was, uh, I think I was probably about five or six hundred revs and then I turned it down quickly and it, it wouldn't stop. It just kept, the chuck just kept cycling, I think at about uh, 50 RPM. Uh, so I had to, I found that I had to turn the motor down slower than I was to, to prevent that. And lastly, uh, the bearings dried up. I just started the lathe up and heard a, a definite bearing noise. So I put some more uh, oil in. Uh, just for now, liquid spray, spray grease, uh, molly slip, and uh, that's quietened everything down, but I will get something thick in there. Um, so if, if you can give me a suggestion for a spray grease, because I'm not going to strip down the bearings, that's far too much work and time. Uh, I just want to get on and make things. So, yeah, hit me up uh, in the comments if you've got anything to say, um, and... Uh, like and subscribe if you like what I've done. Okay, thank you very much for watching.